Hi, I'm Lita Sands, and welcome to our session on building patient virtualized trials with our partner, Evidation Health. Using mobile devices and technology to make clinical trials more efficient and accessible to patients has been a passion of mine for the last several years. I was a member of the Clinical Trials Transformation Initiative, also called CITI, which was a public-private partnership between Duke University and the FDA. And the work stream that I was on and Evidation was on also was helping to contribute to the guidelines around the use of mobile devices in clinical trials. Fast forward to my role today at AWS, and I work with our technical team and solution builders to create industry-ready building blocks that then partners like Evidation Health can, tri can, tri can contribute their deep industry knowledge into how to use them to create really exciting and compelling patient experiences that leverage this modernized regulatory guidance. I'm excited to be joined today by Evidation Health's CTO and co-founder, Alessio Signorini. Evidation was founded in 2012, and they have amassed a very deep library of benchmarks and patterns uh, that help to link together for the first time behavioral data with EMR data and uh, clinical data so that they can create deep insights and have been very effective in helping to impact our everyday behavior so that we can create healthier outcomes. And certainly using the AWS cloud to do that has helped them bring together these complex longitudinal data sets and uncover deep insights. You know, when you think about clinical trials in general, I've been in the industry since 2000, and we've always been trying to help advance past the information that the traditional label includes today, which when you think about it is everybody who is involved in the clinical trial, whether they did well, did average, or not so well. And then we turned our focus to saying, well, who are the highest responders? But now we're in this era of precision and personalized medicine, and we really want to focus on that N of one. Because with high-performance computing, we're really close to being able to define ourselves in terms of data. Uh, there's a, a lot of data that's generated by our bodies. And when you think about that and the processes between the different systems, you can almost start to think about it as the human operating system. And things like CRISPR for gene editing, or uh, messenger RNA as way to apply patches in the code when bugs appear. And if you follow me so far, uh, the modern biopharma can be thought of as less of a manufacturer and more as a very advanced data and technology company. And certainly by using the AWS cloud, they've been able to unlock insights in these massive data sets by using artificial intelligence and machine learning and other analytics. And this is happening real time as we speak. So for example, Moderna was the first biopharma to be born in the AWS cloud. And they were able to take their deep understanding of messenger RNA and apply it toward developing a COVID-19 vaccine that they were able to speed to phase three clinical trials in record time, compressing what would have taken years into literally months or weeks. Evidation Health has been able to do something similar by tapping into our compute power by demonstrating that social and behavioral and digital phenotypes have an interaction with the other systems in our body that can be recorded, and a change in one can result in a positive or negative change in the other. And really what we're talking about here is the fourth industrial revolution for healthcare. So Many of you are familiar with that phrase, but if you're not, if the, the third revolution was around automation, in the fourth industrial revolution, it says if we add the Internet of Things or IoT and AI ML to systems, we can create unique new experiences. So a, a simple example of that might be Uber, right? It's really a, a taxi cab with mobile sensors and algorithms that help to optimize ridership. When it comes to human beings, uh, when we think about all of the great mobile tools and digital sensors that we have access to and the data that that generates, being able to apply AI ML to that helps almost create a pane of glass into a better understanding of our bodies and how our habits shape our health outcomes that that in itself creates almost like a, a check engine light for the body with the accompanying diagnostic. So that's why Amazon Kinesis Data Firehose was created 
to make it easy for companies to be able to capture, prepare, and stream in near real time data into data stores or data lakes or analytical services. And prior to Amazon Kinesis, building the infrastructure to do that was problematic. You'd have to provision and manage a very large fleet of servers that would buffer and batch this continuous data coming in from literally hundreds of thousands of instances simultaneously. If a server went down or if something got stuck, you lose valuable data. But Amazon Kinesis Data Firehose provides a very reliable way to stream that data. And in fact, it also will scale up or down automatically based on volume or throughput. It also helps you manage that streaming service. So when it comes to that data, the uh, batching, compression, encrypting, and then storage into Amazon S3, Amazon Redshift, Amazon Elasticsearch Service, even Splunk, without having to create a separate streaming app or manage infrastructure. So now to learn more about how Evidation Health has used Amazon Kinesis as well as other AWS cloud services to manage patient data, let's turn it now to the CTO and co-founder of Evidation Health, Alessio Signorini. In 2012, my co-founders and I were doing a lot of cool things with big data and machine learning. We are optimizing clicks and ads and videos and building very complex profile of people based on their behaviors. And that's when he hit us. Um, could we do that? Could we apply these techniques to healthcare instead of advertising? Because right now, all dark cars have dozens of sensors. NASCAR races are won on the analytics on those sensors. Yet, as humans, we keep going until we break uh, with no analytics. And then we go to the doctor and hope that the doctor can cure us. The doctor will take some measurement at the time we go there but not before. Healthcare has been always relying on this data set composed by data collected episodically in the clinical setting when you go to the doctor. But what about all the invisible data? What about all the data that's collected passively, continuously in your everyday life as you go and do normal things? The visible data um, is made up by your medical records, your insurance claims, your labs and imaging. The invisible data is made up by your wearable sensor data, by uh, how you use your phone, by the sensor in your phone, by the apps that you use, by how frequently you use them, the time you go to sleep and put down your phone. All that is collected passively, continuously, uh, in a remote way, it's an objective measurement, and it's very, very sensitive. So we bet that that will make a big, big impact on how healthcare evolves over the next years. And that's why we created a company to understand and influence the behaviors that will create better health outcomes. We have been doing this for a long time now. Uh, we've done hundreds of studies and we partner with the most innovative healthcare companies on those studies. We run studies uh, on all sorts of disease and conditions and in the US and you know, internationally. Doing studies, uh, running studies, running digital studies is actually not easy. Uh, there are a lot of components that make up for a study. You have to uh, recruit people, you have to screen the participants, you have to get authorization to look at their medical record, you have to, get the, you know, the, you have to go through the informed consent so they understand what they are going to, to do and what they are required to do and what, how the data will be used. Uh, you have to ask them to connect some digital devices and um, fetch the data from those. There are surveys involved. They, you may have to send them a lab at home, a, a kit at home that then they have to send to a lab and you have to retrieve that data. You have to collect all this data. You have to validate the system. It's rather, rather complex. And the healthcare sector where you work um, is actually uh, very highly regulated, uh, rightfully so. There are healthcare, um, you know, there is HIPAA, there is Part 11 compliance, there is the GDPR, there is the CCPA. You are subjected to privacy and security and healthcare laws, and depending on the government, also with their own policies, and depending on the client or the partner, even with their own internal policies. So building these study platforms presents numerous challenges. Um, 
We personally maintain a lot of those across the globe running multiple studies at the same time. And, and you know, when you have just one, it's a simple thing. When you have plenty, when you have like, you know, dozens of those running at the same time, it becomes much, much more complex. Uh, the data has to be separated, uh, but has to be reliable, and, you know, but it has to be also auditable. Uh, there is strict validation and requirements um, in studies. Uh, you can't just go fast and break things. Uh, rightfully so, you would need several approvals to change your code of the applications. Uh, because if even uh, the color change on a button could skew the results and the data that you collect. Also, studies run for years, uh, five years. And hardware changes, software changes, library changes, your studies have to keep going. And like I said, uh, it's very hard to make changes, so you have to account for that. The traffic pattern is also very strange, it's like very bimodal. Um, at times there will be nobody on the website, nobody using our service, and then some event happens and everybody's using it at the same time. So capacity planning is complex. And you have to be available. You know, high availability is a must. Um, if you're not there to collect the data, you're not collecting the data. If you're not collecting the data, you may skew the results of the study. So uh, thankfully, containers came in our life. Uh, containers were the perfect solution for us for this. Um, they offer increased portability. We don't have to worry about the underlying uh, server or OS upgrades, and we can focus on our own applications. Amazon ECS uh, took care of orchestration for us, uh, load balancing and automatic scaling, so we can really focus on our own code, which is awesome. Uh, they take care of the traffic by modal pattern for us. Um, updating and deploying the servers uh, is much, much easier using containers. And thanks to the tight integration with other AWS services, also uh, secret management and service discovery becomes much easier. We are going to our serverless using AWS Fargate, uh, but we are not there yet. So in our deployment and development pipeline, um, we have a, a set of things to in place to ensure uh, that we can uh, deploy, build these containers in a very good way. Uh, they are validated, they are ready to be deployed. So the developer will, will build some code, will commit some code. A bunch of tests is going to be run on this code. Uh, static analysis, linter, all the tests that we know of, all the unit tests, vulnerability scanning. If all passes, the developer, the engineer, is, can, build, can create a pull request so that other engineers can look at their, their work. Um, the work is reviewed uh, multiple times, and if a couple of approvals um, are given, then the code is merged to the primary code base. At that point, an automated process builds the container um, of the application. Once the container is built, it's sent through a bunch of regression tests to make sure that you know, nothing um, gets discovered, nothing breaks for previous studies that were run. If that stage is also uh, passed, then there is another stage of validation that's more manual, where somebody uh, a bunch of people will go through and make sure that we didn't introduce um, any particular error and the behavior works as expected. Uh, at that point, if that is passed, to, um, the container goes in the repository and it's ready to be launched um, wherever we need it in the world. Another challenge that you have when you run studies um, internationally with millions of people is uh, login and authentications. Uh, in some of our studies, we literally have millions of people log in, and they want to log in with different uh, ways. Um, we went through a bunch of phases at the company. At the beginning, we built our own login system. Then we tried to rely on somebody else. But in the end, we found that AWS Cognito was the best choice for us. Uh, we don't have to worry about scaling. Um, it scales to millions of people. It uh, includes all the social logins that we may want. Uh, Facebook, Google, Apple sign in today, about tomorrow, who knows, and you know, hopefully they will support it. Um, it also offers some cool feature around identity federation and SAML, and this allows us to allow our client to log into our admin interfaces using their own uh, logins, which is huge. Um, it's tightly integrated with other AWS services, so we can use it to authorize access to various uh, underlying services, for example, Kinesis Data Firehose. Our apps, if you authenticate on the app, the app itself, the device can send the data to Kinesis Firehose without going through our own servers. That saves a lot of like headaches to us. 
Um, it was also very, very easy to integrate, you know, thanks to the AWS Amplify library, we could easily integrate it in iOS and React Native and Android and all the platform that we have to support. Um, here you can see a little diagram of how this works, you know, achievement, 4 million people supporting Facebook, Google, Apple sign in and user and password login. Um, it goes through Cognito and then you're authorized to use both the app and the website. And then you get the role that allows you to write in the Kinesis Firehose. The study platform, the same, has to support the achievement login and Facebook and Google and Apple sign in or its own login. And finally, the admin interfaces that I was mentioning before, there you can log in with your AWS credential, you can log in with the AOF division credential, a separate set of username and password, Google, or our client's credentials. And it works the same way. Cognito allows us to normalize these users, which then allow to, they are allowed to get into the uh, admin UIs, um, get a role, and perform certain operations on our services. Um, another challenge for us was doing data ingest at scale. Uh, when you have like millions of apps and devices around the world sending you data, it um, becomes tricky. Um, all the activities that somebody does in a study have to be tracked, whether they are clicks or responses to surveys or movements. Um, and so that's a huge amount of data. The mobile devices that we carry around every day produce a lot, a lot of interesting health data um, that you know, they can be captured passively. You know, the health kit, sensor kit, Samsung Health, every day they keep adding new data types um, that they are interesting for studies. Fitness devices, every day new fitness devices come on the market and every day new sensors are added to those. Um, and so you want to capture these new sensors. Um, in addition, we have you know, devices that we use in certain studies that have dozens of sensors that work at 100 hertz, which means 100 million data points per user per day. Um, and we are talking about study with like, you know, thousands and thousands of users. So that's a significant amount of data. Um, all this has to be highly available and reliable because again, if you miss the data, then you know, your study could be skewed. So you, can, you cannot really do that. Um, by itself, this could be its own company. Um, thankfully, AWS has Kinesis Firehose um, and that's how we solve this problem. The uptime of Kinesis Firehose is very high and so it was satisfactory to us. Um, automatically scales depending on the traffic. Um, data is automatically bundled before being placed on S3. Devices may send data here and there and you don't want a lot of tiny files. You want like you know, bigger files to, to process later. Um, allows you to have an identifier for the streams that's stable. Uh, however, the destination can be um, changed later on. Today we are pushing to S3 bucket, but tomorrow we could change and we don't have to update any of our apps or servers. Um, it offers encryption, both encryption in transient and at rest, which is super important. And also, like I mentioned before, thanks to AWS Cognito, we can allow an authorized device to push directly to the um, Kinesis Firehose without having to go through our own servers, uh, which is used. This is a little, a little simple diagram of how it works. You can see a you know, lot of data on the left, authorized by the application, application um, where you logged in through AWS Cognito. Now the application, whatever it's you know, iOS, React Native, Android, can you know, push directly to the Kinesis Firehose, which will then deposit all this data on an S3 bucket. Everything I've said, um, it's not theoretical. Those are challenges that we faced over the last few years, you know, trying to do studies. Uh, we did a lot of rigorous science with big data and we had meaningful impact on the healthcare and the health and the healthcare of a lot of people. Um, we worked with the Singapore government in their national population health program, for example. Uh, we detected early signs of COVID-19, analyzing the behavior like sleep and activity patterns of people. Uh, we reduced the stroke risk of people, um, you know, monitoring, detecting atrial fibrillation through sensors. Um, we improved diabetes-related outcomes, uh, proving objectively that we changes in behavior could uh, reduce your hemoglobin A1C and your total cholesterol. Uh, we also you know, monitor Alzheimer and cognitive decline, looking at the behavior and the sleep, of the sleep patterns of people. And there are many, many other examples of what the impact that we had. Um, some takeaways, if you are also interested in improving health outcomes and healthcare in general. Um, 
One is don't build your own study platform. It's very, very complicated and will take you forever. The second one is be ready to be audited a lot. And I really mean a lot by everybody you will ever work with multiple times. So really be ready for that. Be grateful for the cloud and really embrace the cloud. Like, you know, not having to worry about uh, cooling and fires and security and failures of hardware everywhere in the world. It's, it's huge. Um, it's game changer. Also, I embrace containers. Um, there is a little bit of a learning curve at the beginning. And so some people don't do it, but you know, it will actually make your life easier in the long run. So just do it. And then again, we can't, in healthcare, we can't go fast and break things. Uh, we have to move slowly. We have to be methodical. We have to be intentional. We have to do a lot of code reviews. Because after all, we are, do, we are talking about you know, the health data and the health of people. So we have to be careful in what we do. Thank you.